Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing today? So in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can synthesize your very own kick drum using Ableton's operator. So let's get into it. Um, I got a blank MIDI clip here and I'm going to drag an operator in and load it in. And basically the way that this is set up right now, it's uh, it's like set up to, to run uh, an FM style synthesis. So I'm going to set it up with this mode and this is basically turning it into a regular subtractive uh, synthesizer so none of these oscillators that are over here are modulating each other they are all acting independently which is what we want so after you've selected that mode basically we have to think about um, what components a kick drum is comprised of so um, there's a click initial click and then there's a kind of subby bass here part that rings out afterwards right and obviously depending on the type of kick drum that is being um, played, that click length and the bass um, ring out will vary, right? So the thing that's very cool about this is you can determine how long you want the click to go for, what frequency you want the click at, the level that you want the click at, how long you want the sub to ring out for, where you want the sub sitting, all that cool stuff. You have complete control over the um, crafting of your kick drum, right? So enough talking. Let's go like so, and I'm going to zoom in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little headphone button, and I don't know, let's put something down here at C, C1, okay? And then I'm going to duplicate that across, and let's pretend I know what I'm doing here. So we'll just go like this, okay? Or in the floor style. And I'm going to let, I'm going to have this run all the way through. Legato. Okay. So that doesn't sound anything like a kick drum. That's literally just a sine wave that's playing, right? It's like, okay, what the hell is this guy doing? Give me a second here. Okay, so first oscillator. We have the envelope here, the amp envelope, uh, as running a sine wave, and it is set to full sustain, and the decay is at 40 seconds, right? So no, no kick drum rings out that long ever. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to shorten the decay. We're going to click on this and we're going to bring it down. Okay, so there's more of a click. And uh, something I'm going to do here that's kind of just for visual aid. Is I'm going to open an EQ8 and I'm going to see where on the frequency spectrum this is hitting. So because we've drawn in a C, that pure sine tone is generating a single harmonic here at uh, C1, right? 64 hertz. So we know that we're in kind of kick drum territory for the fundamental, which is cool. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the pitch envelope here. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to tell it basically to send the oscillator down from a higher point um, on the frequency spectrum, right? So let's just listen to that. So you can hear how basically we'll take a look at actually at the EQ and see what's going on. So you can see, actually, maybe I'll open span for you guys. That might even be a better identifier. So there's a sweeping downward of that sine wave, right? It's not just playing at the fundamental anymore. It's coming down from a higher frequency, from higher notes, and it's pitching all the way down into that uh, lower register. So what we can do here is we can actually manipulate the decay time, and we can also change where the peak of the pitch um, shift starts, right? So the higher up we have the peak, the initial um, shift starting from the more the higher up the register that sine wave is going to sweep down so we're going to get more pronounced effect so let's listen right so now we're getting a little closer to something that resembles a kick it's not there yet but it's closer right so you can play with the pitch envelope amount here you can change the decay you can change um, the peaks, the initial start, all that, all that fun stuff, right? So let's just set it there for now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into oscillator B here. We don't need these other two. And I'm going to go 
and I'm going to select uh, noise. Let's just put some noise in over top. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I manipulate this noise envelope here too. Right, so the amplitude now of that noise has has shortened and it's providing a little bit of an initial click at the start of that drum. And it's a matter of blending to taste. We have the filter on here at uh, 12 kilohertz, so let's bring it up and see if we can get a little bit more brightness out of this. And then you can change your resonance um, to increase the presence of that particular click. Whatever frequency you want to blend it in at. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to mess around a little bit here, see if we can get something that sounds okay. Okay, so then what we can do is we can go into the filter and we can choose a different type of drive here, right? So I'm going to choose something other than clean and then I'm going to apply a little bit of filter drive to this and this is going to help kind of bring some more harmonics out. So it's going to kind of saturate the sound. It's going to blend the two elements together and make it sound a little bit more natural. And then let's try applying a shaper as well and maybe a little bit of drive and let's we can try the the different types we can try the soft the hard sign or four bit and see what we get here right so that's pretty damn pronounced um bring that down adjust this It's almost like a like a techier kick kind of without much bass so we would obviously have to do more shaping to get it to where we want it to be can try changing from osr filter to a different type turn this off right so there's a lot of different a lot of different options here and um, something that's really cool after this is obviously you can you can print it out if you want um, by going like so. Uh, here we go, resampling. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this. So now we have a sampled kick drum here, and um, I mean. You would probably take a lot more time crafting with the different uh, controls that I showed you to get something that, I mean, this sounds okay, but there's definitely better sounding kick drums out there. But for the sake of the example, um, I think you guys will understand the technique. But now what you can do is you can go in and actually manipulate the audio if you want, right? So let's say I wanted to shrink this down a little bit, right? In terms of its tail, I can do that now. which is kind of cool. Um, so something that's more punchy, something that has the, the sub that rings out a little longer, depending on the track that you're working in. You can double click, you can go in, you can actually look at the waveform too. And you can see here that, I mean, uh, there's not a huge change in volume at the start of this. Um, it's, it's fairly consistent throughout. It doesn't drop off drastically in any uh, point here. So that means um, you're going to have a fairly consistent sound uh, all the way through your kick, which is always good. 
Um, and then of course, if you wanted to layer this with something else, you could totally do that. Um, you could EQ this, bring, bring some of the mid range out, pronounce, have some other areas in the drum pronounced if you wanted. So let's just mess around with that, see what we can get going here. Just pulling some of the mids out. Let's try boosting some highs, see what happens. Try cut lows, a little bit of lows here. Right, so yeah, um, and then of course you could go, you could go to town. You could, why the hell not? Let's grab a glue compressor. This is a cool technique. Basically, what you do is you don't change the threshold on it. I'm just gonna blast a whole bunch of clipping onto this drum, and uh, I'm gonna put a utility in as well. So let's say. Just for the sake of it, let's go 20 and bring this down by 20. And turn the saw clipping on, of course. So now we're getting even more harmonics and saturation, and this is going to turn. Like, if we resample this, this will basically look like a, a complete brick wall. It's not going to have much dynamics until near the tail, right? So. Can group these and listen to the before and after see what it sounds like so again a lot more mid-range um like a tech house kick almost very fat flubby uh depending on the style you're going for that could be kind of cool so that is a quick tutorial on crafting kick drums in ableton using only stock plugins i hope you guys learned something if there's anything that you want me to touch on in the future, let me know and I will try to cover it. Well, cool. 